So if this was a normal prostate, we might say this is a well differentiated adenocarcinoma, this is a moderate or moderately well, and this is a poor. And uh, if we wanted to put that in a pathology report, we might uh, actually use the descriptive language going from the best differentiated degree of differentiation, which is called well, to the uh, least best or the worst differentiated or the worst prognosis in which the word poorly differentiated might be applied. Sometimes grading, uh, especially in the older days, was given numbers or Roman numerals or letters, most likely numbers. Uh, and except for prostate, this uh, numeric system doesn't seem to be too important anymore. In prostate, these numbers called Gleason's numbers are Gleason's numbers are extremely important, though. Now, in terms of staging, the predominant staging system universally in the world and for most organ systems is the TNM, with T representing the degree of involvement or size of the tumor. N representing regional or other lymph node involvement and M being metastatic. So for example, a T1 tumor would be smaller or better prognosis than a T3 or a T4. Sometimes these numbers go up to three or four. I've even seen them higher. Sometimes you'll uh, see the term IS after a T referring to the fact that the malignancy is in situ. Sometimes you'll see the uh, subscript X after an N or an M referring to the fact that uh, the um, degree of node or metastatic spread is not assessed or unknown. Sometimes, uh, especially with lymphomas, the staging is in terms of Roman numerals from one generally to four. It doesn't go much higher than that. Sometimes it goes to three. Uh, and once again, with grading, sometimes you'll see regular uh, letters or, or, or numbers, but that's not used too much anymore. And pretty much TNM has become the gold standard in all of its uh, variations. Uh, we diagnose cancers by biopsying them, looking at them, or perhaps scraping gently the cells from them, like in a pap smear, or sticking a needle into the tumor and looking at the uh, aspirate of that and generally, uh, the fine needle aspirate has like mushroomed over the past uh, generation or so in terms of uh, utility and convenience and uh, diagnostic uh, accuracy. But generally, these are the common ways. Uh, another thing that has mushroomed over the last uh, generation or two has been the concept of immunohistochemistry. And to make a long story short, immunohistochemistry or immunochemistry or immunoperoxidase, which it was called in the old days, is basically a way uh, to stain antigens on tumor cells. That's all that it is. So if you have a very undifferentiated tumor and you don't even know whether it's a sarcoma or carcinoma, for example, you might want to stain it with classical uh, epithelial or stromal markers to find out where it came from. Sometimes you could actually uh, figure out what organ it came from too. Often you can't. Not all organs have specific uh, antigens. Uh, also, immunochemistry is used extensively in the classification of leukemias and lymphomas. And the things that are uh, uh, stained are often called markers as well. Uh, sometimes if you want to know whether a tumor will be responsive to estrogen or progesterone, you can do immunohistochemistry to find out whether that tumor is ERA positive or estrogen receptor positive or PR positive. So these are the uh, four common reasons for using immunohistochemistry, which is very, very uh, much welcome uh, diagnostically, medical legally, but usually not uh, present needed to be done in straightforward tumors. And speaking of tumor markers, let's introduce the concept that certain tumors, once again, express certain uh, compounds. We saw in the case of hormones, tumors are expressing endocrine compounds. Some 
uh, tumors express antigens which are called oncophetal and that might be seen with for example uh, uh, a CEA or an AFP from a GI or a liver cancer uh, AFP standing for alpha fetoprotein CEA standing for carcinoembryonic antigen uh, sometimes the tumor markers are isoenzymes like PAP or uh, prostatic acid phosphatase you could guess that this would be from a prostate tumor or NSE neuron specific enolase you might ex expect that uh, this isoenzyme might be from a uh, neural type tumor like a neural endocrine tumor like a small cell carcinoma certain proteins like PSA prostate specific antigen uh, can be expressed by tumors uh, certain glycoproteins like CA125 notoriously with uh, ovarian cancer other CA glycoproteins as well and of course some of the tumor markers can actually be the measurement of the proteins that are coded for by the specific oncogene so we can measure the p53 gene or the p53 protein and the same with RAS as well now the most important to remember however is that these tumors may express these substances uh, where they can actually be measured in the blood but they may not be in high enough quantities to be measured in the blood so often you would have to take these tumors and stained for these specific things uh, by looking at the tissue itself so just because a tissue for example might be positive for PSA that doesn't mean that it's going to uh, be as high enough to have blood levels and also remember another thing most or many of these things are not perfectly specific for tumors they're often expressed by the normal tissue itself so hardly any of these things would be recommended as screening tests but what they are very very valuable for is to look at the follow-up uh, of a therapy for example if somebody has had prostate cancer and their PSA levels has been low 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 after surgery after radiation after chemo and all of a sudden there's a significant increase or rise then that might be an indication that the tumor has recurred even if there is no other anatomic uh, evidence by the usual diagnostic or radiologic modalities and uh, last but not least it wouldn't be fair if we didn't talk a little bit about microarrays and I'll have to admit that I am not, I am pretty ignorant on this technology I had to do a lot of reading about it and uh, it's been said that in the future uh, tumors will be diagnosed not under a microscope looking at cells but by taking those tumors and putting them onto these little microchips which have many thousands of gene fragments on them in different tiny areas or oligonucleotides and then to see what specific genes are expressed or not expressed well the people who say that the pathologists aren't going to have any microscopes anymore are usually the people that never spent their life uh, devoting their lives to the art of being able to recognize things under the microscope but there's no doubt that in the future microarrays will be very very good for both diagnosis as well as uh, a treatment uh, right now it's in its infancy stage uh, probably by the time uh, you're teaching pathology uh, it may very well uh, replace much of what we do uh, in microscopy and uh, this is the end of the single biggest chapter uh, for general pathology the chapter on uh, neoplasia and uh, you know like Sarah Palin uh, I felt like I basically survived it and I learned a lot of new things uh, I wish I really 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 knew a lot more about it I don't feel like I conquered this chapter I felt like I uh, adequately uh, presented it in a decaffeinated kind of way but that's really for you to decide so once again I thank you very much